Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm my, on my quest for England, or should I say my search for Sussex, because this is the start of um, a, a temporary focus, I suppose, whilst we're in lockdown. Now, in a previous video, I explained what the project is. I have with me in my bag a copy of Off the Beaten Track, in Sussex by Arthur Stanley Cook, a terrific compendium written, originally published, I've discovered, in 1911 or 12, 1911-12, that sort of time, um, and then republished, presumably after the First World War, um, as a result of interest, in 1920s. Uh, so it's about a hundred years old, and I'm going to go wandering around following the trails and tracks that uh, Arthur Stanley Cook did. And right at the beginning, we're starting here at Bramber. So, here we are. Bramber Castle, looking resplendent, or at least the, the remaining part of the gatehouse, looking rather lovely. Now it's interesting because this book, as the title of the book says, Off the Beaten Track, is trying to show its readers places that weren't really well known in Sussex. And clearly uh, his assumption is that uh, Bramber Castle was a pretty famous landmark to people in Sussex or visitors to the county. Um, and so he, he basically says nothing about it, doesn't even mention that it was built by the Normans or that it was William de Burroughs who uh, was in charge here or anything about the various divisions into rapes of land that the Norman barons or the, uh, looked after. So he doesn't mention the Mott over there, uh, which would have had the, uh, the tower on it and the bailey here and the odd little bits of buildings and things. Or indeed, he doesn't even mention the gatehouse, which is incredible. But what he does do, and he starts, is down at the church. So I think I better go and do that. Just so you know, I have actually made a video here before, so you can go and look that up if you want to see a bit more about Bramber Castle. It is a beautiful and very charming church, but Unfortunately, in the time of lockdown, we can't actually get in uh, because all churches have been locked. Now, I don't know whether with the easing that we've come into, this sort of second phase of lockdown, whether they will open up the churches. I do hope they will. But it's interesting to read what Arthur Stanley Cook has said about the church here because uh, we can't go in and see any of this. But he says that uh, he talks about the arches and uh, he says that he'd glimpsed these four Norman arches supporting a low massive tower to the west having curiously carved capitals. These arches and the whole of the Chower chancel were decorated in a somewhat trivial style, he says, about 30 years ago, which would make that at the, I guess, um, the end of the Victorian period. These with stenciled bands and ornaments. <laughs> but uh, Norman arch architecture, he says, doesn't lend itself to pretty in art, nothing but its own rugged, deep-cut zigzag tooth and billet mouldings and the like have any part in its sombre magnificence. And then he just carries on to point out that the tower and the short nave, which we see here, is all that remains of a once larger church. It is a, it is a beautiful church.
ha ha. This is magnificent. I love this view with the, the church tower here. And then beyond, you get to see the gatehouse of the castle. What it must have looked like in its day is just, you know, amazing. And what a wonderful place to be with the South Downs around us. And here in spring, you've got the abundance of, of course, all the, all the growth from the vegetation, the trees and plants and shrubs and what have you. Uh, it must have been so, so different to how we see things, but I guess very everyday for everybody else. Well, here I've got to leave St. Nicholas Church and carry on our journey because he next takes us down into the village. Well, this is Bramber and it is a very lovely village now. It's very, I mean, it's very quiet, apart from the odd traffic. Uh, traffic's supposed to actually slow right down to 20 miles an hour in the village here. Um, <clears throat> and it's got these wonderful old, I think some of them are very old houses and ancient houses and beautiful stonework and marvelous architecture and what have you. Um, but the interesting thing that Arthur, I'm going to call him Arthur, in the book says about Bramber, he says a lot of the Sussex villages um, suffer from this long road and uh, he says that's the trouble. Once the motor car came along, and of course we see that now, uh, it, it became tyranny to him. He thought it was atrocious, it was dreadful. He said, the merit might be that you have dust-free roads, which of course before tarmac and um, tarmacadden and all that sort of stuff, um, it would have been muddy and in the summer, presumably dusty, but oh yes, he absolutely hated the motor car. And remember this is the 90, well, he originally wrote this just before the First World War. So motor cars were just coming and by the twenties, more people were beginning to own them. It must have been a very odd transition. One of the things that uh, Arthur mentions um, very much is that people like to come, artists particularly, like to come and draw and paint uh, Aunt Bramber. And they tend to come from, or they tend to look from that direction up this way so that you can see the, uh, the big tower entrance there, the gatehouse, and the tree-covered um, castle hill. But he um, claimed that there was a better view, uh, and it must have been looking this way, I can only imagine, from here, out across the, uh, the plains towards the River Ada, where there was a mill. Now, I don't know where this mill was, but he thought that was a much more beautiful view. So if you know where the mill was, I'd be fascinated to know. There's always local people who see these videos and go, hey, I know where that was. Um, so that's interesting. One of the other, um, of course, fascinating houses that a lot of visitors come to see is at the far end. Um, and it's a, a beautiful Tudor uh, building, timber framed and all of that. What I remember personally most about Bramber, and I've said this in a previous video, was the pipe museum that was here. And I'm not quite sure where it was, but I remember seeing it when I was probably in my late teens and was very enamored with pipes and pipe smoking. I thought it made um, men look very much like gentlemen. It's funny what people notions are when they're young. Right, we can't linger here too long. We've got to go further up towards Beeding and have a look at the bridge. So, what he calls Beeding is Upper Beeding. And for me, Upper Beeding is all about the bridge. This wonderful bridge over the River Ada. Arthur talks about how 
back in the day, of course, when Stenning was a port up here and, and maybe closer, I suppose, to Stenning, ships came with their supplies as far inland as they could get, I think, up to Stenning, which was a major port over the centuries. Of course, all of that has changed. And now we have this uh, much more quaint bridge here. Um, and it's a humpback bridge, so it slows the traffic down, which is quite good. Uh, on the corner, right at the, uh, up behind me really, is a, a beautiful building that used to be, I think called the Bridge Inn or something like that, the Bridge Tavern or something like that. It's now a private home. Unfortunately, it was a pub and an inn and you can imagine people would travel here, stay, walk up and down the River Ada, perhaps um, go over the Downs and all that sort of stuff, visit the, uh, the various other shops. There are other pubs, an, an old barn here that's now a pub. He mentions or has a, a picture of an old barn in the book and I don't know if that's the, what is the pub now, it's very difficult to tell in the uh, hundred years since. Um, and his journey carries on. He mentions that it's a fair old step to Beading's Church, which actually is, is much further that way. It is a bit of a distance. And I'll start there, I think, on the next episode. So, beautiful houses here, uh, again. But for me, it is the bridge that marks out Beading and probably a, an old ford or crossing point here, um, which is why the bridge and the long road to the castle at Bramber. I've come down to the south side of uh, the bridge here at Upper Beading and the, the River Ada goes, winds its way down to Shoreham where through here of course those boats I mentioned earlier could possibly have come up or if the river was slightly that way um, maybe it went over there. Anyway that's neither here nor there. Um, as you can see, there's a pedestrian bridge that goes across because the bridge itself is not terribly wide. So there's only enough really room for one car, although they do get buses and lorries go thundering across, which I'm sure Arthur would have absolutely found most distasteful. Uh, on the other side, we've got the, the, the reverse side of the, the bridge in and the lovely villages, uh, the lovely properties which carry on eastwards. Looking behind me, I've got uh, some rather nasty clouds coming, so I'm going to go and take refuge. Um, but that's the end of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to carry on and persevere, see what it's like in search of Sussex with Arthur Stanley Cook and his off the beaten track. So. I will see you in the next one. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, become a patron, uh, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.